Alright, this video is about the various landforms and diagrams that you need to be able to sketch under chapter 1, Living with Tectonic Hazards. First one, we'll talk about conversion plates, conversion plates, conversion oceanic plates, where you have two oceanic plates converging together is highly similar to conversion oceanic and continental plates. Only difference is for the one with continental plates, there is a tendency for us to sketch in addition to the volcano uh, for mountains. In this particular case here, we would require you to include uh, the following things. Rising magma as a result of the oceanic plate that has been subducting, melting and rising up through cracks, forming volcanoes. The formation of the volcano itself on the oceanic plate that is folding as a result of the subduction. You need to also indicate the presence of the deep sea trench, the subduction zone. Okay, next up we have the convergent continental plates. Uh, this is when you have two continental plates that are pushing against one another. A very famous one that we learned about in your textbook is where you have the Eurasian plate pushing against the Indian plate. Key landform that is a result of this is four mountains due to the low density of both plates involved in this compression your continental plates do not subduct as a result they push against one another and one of them will fall and buckle dramatically forming large foam mountains due to the lack of subduction uh, there will be very minimal plates melting henceforth it is very unusual to find volcanic activity when you have convergent continental plates. Important thing to note in the diagram, it is a very simple diagram. The squiggly arrows indicate the compression that the both plates undergo. There must be a clear evidence that there is no subduction on either plate. You should also include names for the plates as well as uh, naming the landform that is shown. In this particular diagram here, I am missing the labelling for the Himalayan mountain range. Now we move on to divergent, divergent continental plates, plates that move apart from one another. Uh, within your syllabus, there is one occurrence of this uh, that is highlighted. This is where you find the Great African Rift Valley. Uh, at this location, your Somalian plate moves away from the continental plate. Magma rises from the mantle area and new land is formed. As a result of this pushing the uh, two plates apart, uh, the land actually fractures and hence forth in the diagram you must show very clearly the fracturing indicated by the, the parallel sets of grooves as this forms the rift valley. Under the ocean, you can experience oceanic plates diverging as well. The example that is given here is the Mid-Atlantic Ridge Similar to your divergent continental plates, you have two plates that are moving away from one another. You have magma that is rising upwards and hence off, resulting in the two oceanic plates fracturing and forming parallel fractures on both sides of the rising magma. The whole area there is your undersea ridge. In, in this particular case, because it is the mid-Atlantic ridge we are looking at, it is all found underneath the Atlantic Ocean. Now when you have divergent oceanic plates, it is possible that volcanic islands form as a result of uh, the rising magma coming through not the main rich central area but the sides through fractures that exist and volcanoes can grow as a result of this. The last set of uh, landforms that we will be looking at are your volcanoes. Within your syllabus, there are two types of volcanoes that you will need to identify as well as potentially sketch. The first one we're looking at here is a shield volcano. Uh, example that was given is Mount Washington in America. Key factors that lead to formation of few shield volcanoes include low viscosity lava, low silica content, white base gentle sloping sites, the sites that are made of layers of ash and lava. So within the diagram itself is a very very simple diagram, key point being the magma chamber being highlighted. There are also times where you can choose to highlight where the central vent is, where the crater is. 
Shiu Volcano. The final landform in this video will be the Strato Volcano. Um, for this, this is another type of volcano that is formed. Uh, within the diagram itself, you have to have your title, your labeling on top, of course. Uh, include things like a secondary vent, your crater, your main vent or main pipe, and the layering of ash and lava. Also, try to include the magma chamber. Now, uh, Mount Pinatubo is an example of a strato volcano very near us in the Philippines. Other key things that will happen for strato volcanoes include like uh, the potential for very strong eruptions, the relative high potential of uh, forming pyroclastic eruptions, like the one that was experienced in Pompeii. The lava in these areas tend to be high in viscosity, uh, high in silica content, so the overall movement is slower. As a result of the slower movement, it is able to build tall, steep sides. Mm, but the other side effect of this very thick, slow moving lava is there are times where it will get plugged in and you have large build of pressure, gas and lava, which will come out in a massive eruption. So technically your strato volcano eruptions tend to be much stronger than the eruptions you get from a shield volcano. So here we have all the major diagrams you will need to replicate and explain within the topic of living with tectonic hazards. I hope this will help you in some way with your revision and please subscribe to the channel and give it a thumbs up. Thank you.